Applying cricoid pressure is an essential skill for health workers, however many are unaware of the correct technique. Cricoid pressure is the application of pressure on the cricoid cartilage to prevent aspiration during rapid induction of general anesthesia. From this video you will learn, what is cricoid pressure, where to apply it, when to apply it, how much pressure to apply, and why we have to give cricoid pressure. Let's get on to the video. First, we'll use what is cricoid pressure. Cricoid pressure involves the application of pressure at the cricoid ring to occlude the upper esophagus, thereby preventing the regurgitation of gastric contents into the pharynx. Cricoid pressure is the pressure that is applied with the thumb and finger and finger at either side of the cricoid cartilage. The cricoid cartilage is nothing but the ring-shaped structure that sits just below the thyroid cartilage, at the level of the C6 vertebra. It is the only complete cartilaginous ring of the whole airway. In simple words, the pressure over the cricoid cartilage is known as cricoid pressure. Where to apply this cricoid pressure? We should give pressure over the cricoid cartilage. For that, we have to locate the cricoid cartilage. First, usually, the first complete ring of cartilage is located below the thyroid cartilage or Adam's apple. How much pressure to apply? A force of 30 N. 3 kilograms is recommended for an unconscious patient without exerting 44 newtons of pressure in an antero posterior direction the esophagus is occluded although this much pressure may also obstruct the airway so one of the assistants should place one hand behind the patient's neck flexing it into the sniffing position while applying conventional cricoid pressure with the other hand and the safe pressure depth is 2 to 3 centimeters why we have to give cricoid pressure because cricoid pressure is used to prevent regurgitation and aspiration. It is maintained until proper placement of the ET is confirmed, by visualizing the tube passing through the glottis. Okay, that's with cricoid pressure, without cricoid. With cricoid, without cricoid. Kinda cool. When to release the cricoid pressure. Prematurely releasing the cricoid pressure before confirming the correct placement of the tracheal tube is a common error and places the patient at risk for aspiration, particularly if inadvertent esophageal intubation has occurred. Cricoid pressure must be released immediately should active vomiting occur, otherwise, there is a danger of esophageal rupture. Okay, friends, that's all about today. I hope you all like this video. Subscribe to this channel for regular updates. Post your comments and suggestions in the comment box. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.